here. It's primary visual. And it's going to be uh, simple lines and shapes. Some of this processing occurs early on on something called the thalamus, but a lot of it occurs in primary motor. This area is visual association. And this is going to th see things like color, form, and movement. I'm going to do two lesions here, and I'm going to put one of them over on the other side, but I'll put one right here. There's an area right here called MT. And there's a lady in Switzerland, and you can find her on the HHMI website, so Howard Hughes has a little write-up on her. She had a lesion there, and she could not see motion anymore. So she cannot cross the street because she can't tell if cars are coming at her or if cars are parked. She can't fill up her coffee mug because she can't watch the coffee fill up the cup because that requires motion. It was described basically as she sees life as a strobe. So if you're in a haunted house and there's a strobe light and it's really kind of uncomfortable, that's basically how she had to live her life. There's another one. I'm going to jump over to this side because it's a little bit easier to put this one on the inside. But this is something, it's called the fusiform gyrus. Fusiform gyrus lesions lead to prosopagnosia. You can see, but you can't recognize faces. So the point of showing both of these lesions is to show you that vision is kind of in very tiny little parts. You can lose just just motion of vision, you can you lose just the part of your visual sense, visual system that senses faces too. So it's all pretty compartmentalized. I think I got one more thing over on this side, and that's this. Oh, I got a couple more things, I guess. Got the cerebellum. The cerebellum does complex motor behavior, hitting a golf ball, hitting a two-handed backhand, riding a bike. We'll put the next part of this on a lesion though, and we'll say that lesions, and maybe we'll just put it right next to it. Lesions of cerebellum though suggest that it's more than just motor behavior. because patients with lesions of the cerebellum got bad at things like chest, they got bad at sequencing things, they got bad at sentence structure, suggesting that bad sentence structure and bad at chest, suggesting this area is responsible for sequential thinking cerebellum does sequential thinking there's a little area in here we'll try and find somewhere where we can put this called Wernicke's area helps you sound out words. So if you need to pronounce Wernicke's for the first time, you're probably going to say it Wer Wernicke's, and your Wernicke's area is going to be very active at that point. Kind of surrounding that, and 
it can be different on either side or it mainly can be on the left and it's kind of just one of those areas where you got to put it somewhere you got to put things like decision making and opinion making and things like that somewhere and I've got to find somewhere to put it on here it's called general interpretation area it's responsible for um, kind of visual guesses like can I fit this in here it's also generally just when you have opinions when you want to put a bunch of sensory area, sensory information together into an overall opinion or thoughts, then it's thought to occur in there. And that makes sense because you got sensory information here, visual information, hearing information here. That's a good place to put all that together into kind of a cogent opinion of something.